All right, welcome back, folks. I'm feeling much better, and I'm ready to stare at my laptop screen for hours until I come up with a decent idea for a video. Today's subject, defining great boss mechanics. Game mechanics are basically elements or a set of rules that govern how a game plays. So when applying this to boss battles, it's how the boss interacts with you or how you interact with the boss. It's a concept that builds upon the gameplay, and I'll give you an example. The Smelter Demon from Dark Souls 2 has a mechanic where he powers up and creates this aura of flames around his waist. If you get too close, you'll take consistent damage, which is now a new mechanic that the player needs to be aware of. In simple terms, it's the rules that govern how the boss fight plays out. So, with that out of the way, my name is Josh, and I hope you enjoy. First, let's talk about bad boss mechanics so that we have both sides established. The reason why a boss would have bad mechanics is because those mechanics don't mix well in that specific game in the first place. The Bed of Chaos from Dark Souls 1 is a great example because her whole mechanic is about platforming in a game where platforming leads to death or not exactly great situations. Dark Souls is not about platforming, and never was. Not saying that it can't excel in that, look at Sen's Fortress, but most attempts they've done so far was mediocre at best. So when you have a boss that completely revolves around that mechanic, I'm, you know, I'm not surprised that she's one of the most hated bosses in the entire series. Another reason why a boss would have a bad mechanic is because it can be artificial. What I mean by that is a mechanic that makes the fight tougher or longer, but in a stale way that nobody likes. You see this green nugget of a mini-boss? This thing insta-kills you with all of its attacks. That's the mechanic. Good luck. I know the Tom Berry from Final Fantasy VII is, is really easy, I get it, but I didn't know that at the time, so give me some stuff. Come on! Lastly, what makes a bad mechanic for a boss is a boring one. It adds no flavor to the fight, so it's more annoying than anything. I loved Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, and I'm actually very excited for the second game, but the final boss, Hela, was such a disappointment. I fought regular enemies for 15 minutes, and only then did I realize I don't think this is how the fight's supposed to go. You have to lose on purpose, basically, which makes sense for the narrative, actually in a very beautiful way, but from a boss fight perspective, as the final boss, too, uh, it's kakapupu. So those are some examples as to what not to do when it comes to boss mechanics, and now we can get into the heart of the situation. One of the best mechanics a boss can have is one that amplifies or subverts their own abilities, otherwise known as multiple phases. Why do you think 90% of the bosses in Elden Ring have a second phase? It's because they make the fight better every single time. Okay, maybe not... You know what, I was wrong. It's a humbling experience when you adapt and overcome the patterns of a fight, only to realize you're not done yet. Now, there are two distinct phase transitions that I've personally noticed when it comes to bosses with multiple phases. The first one is a boss that builds upon their own abilities. Take Lady Maria from Bloodborne, for example. Lady Maria starts by trying to stab you, naturally, but once she's at about half health, she stabs herself on purpose, by the way, and releases her blood arts. Nothing really changes except all of her moves now have blood after effects that not only extend her attacks, but have their own hitbox. Wait, it gets better. Once you bring her down to about a third of her health, I would say, maybe a little bit below that, she then adds fire to the mix. So now she has fire, blood, and her actual attack that you need to be aware of. It's such an amazing progression of complexity that makes her one of my favorite bosses in the entire game. It felt like I was dancing with Maria, like, I, I seriously love this boss. Now, the other type of phase transition is one I like to call Topo. See, Topo from Dragon Ball Super was all about justice and good deeds. He was a fine gentleman, you know, until Golden Frieza pushed him into a corner. And then he changed and was all about destruction, discarding everything he stood for. Now, just like Topo, many bosses say, and change into a completely different animal, disregarding how they fought before. Take a Godfrey from Elden Ring, for example, who is quite literally a copy and paste of Topo's moralities, I just realized. It's kinda cool. He starts off as a valiant lord of the Elden Ring, but once he realizes that's not gonna get him, and f you know, the, uh, 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 he submits to his bloodlust and fights with his bare man paws. 
It's cool to see him fight with a giant axe, swinging it around like a war hero, and then in the second phase, choke slamming his opponent like a novice WWE wrestler. I mean, this type of face transition is one of my favorites. It's unexpected, it's a nice twist, and it gives the player a whole new moveset to be aware of. It's like getting two fights for one. Ironically, Ludwig the Holy Blade from Bloodborne as well is the complete opposite of Godfrey and a much better boss by the way. Ludwig starts as a ferocious beast, but once he reaches half health, this happens. My He regains a part of his humanity and now fights as a heroic hunter, even though the distorted horse head doesn't exactly scream, I'm the good guy, but that's how he fights in the second phase. I'm actually playing through Bloodborne right now and it's, <laughs> it's bloody great. Giving these bosses different phases, whether it may be improving their abilities or subverting their own rules, makes them more complex and adds multiple layers for the players to dig deep into. It's a pretty simple idea that carries so much ground in countless different games. Let's talk about bosses that break the norms in their own game. Now you're probably wondering, Josh, you said in the beginning that bosses with mechanics that don't belong in that game suck and shouldn't work. Well, you're mostly right, but that doesn't apply to all cases. It's similar to when a student breaks English norms, the teacher gets upset, but when the author does it, the teacher is like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing I've ever read, and then like has sex with the book. My point is you have to be an expert to apply different or new rules to a boss in a game where you don't usually encounter that and make it good. Don't look too hard into it. I'll give you a few examples. In Monster Hunter, normally you stab a creature for 15 plus minutes until they keel over and you can carve their skin. Oh, a mantle, nice. The monsters of this franchise are second to none and have numerous abilities and mechanics that improve the hunt themselves, but very few have a mechanic or structure that actually changes the course of the entire hunt. A latch you're in from Monster Hunter World, Iceborne is a good start. While the fight kind of plays out normally, the key idea here is dealing elemental damage. Alatrion's fight is all about the elemental damage, and you have a time limit to deal as much of that damage as possible. If you didn't deal enough damage in time, Alatrion basically vibe checks your entire party and kills everyone. However, if you do enough elemental damage, his Eschaton Judgment, the big attack, will be severely weakened. Great boss mechanics don't always have to be offensive. Sometimes bosses have mechanics that revolve around their weaknesses, just like Alatrion. Uh, uh, you get what I'm saying. There are other monsters in the series that break the flow of a normal hunt as well. Some monsters are so big that you need a full-on pirate ship to fight them properly. Plus, I mean, shooting cannons is fun. Bring Jen Moran back. Others are even bigger, but fighting them equals climbing their back and chipping away at their claws. Some dragons are completely under the water and you have to fight them, I mean, you know, under the water. Others have unique arenas with unique equipment to use and, you know, I could go on. The normal flow of a hunt is not present within these boss fights, but because they are unique, they stand out properly to provide a new and intriguing way to hunt monsters. And I think it works out pretty well. There is a huge variety when it comes to hunting the different monsters. Again, they have different mechanics, different movesets, but the bigger ones usually have a different structure to it. In other games, bosses will have a specific weak point or opening that the player must utilize. And in the case of the Doom franchise, that's not really the norm here. Normally, you're ripping demons apart like it's nobody's business, and it's more addicting than drugs. Seriously, if you're having a bad day, put in Doom Eternal and go ham on some demons. It, it, it works for me. Some of the bosses played out a bit differently, however. Exhibit A, the Dark Lord and the final DLC for Doom Eternal. You can't go full on guts mode on him like you normally can on most other things. Instead, you have to wait for this small opening to counterattack. And if you want the opening to last even longer, you smack the ground with this really cool hammer, leaving him vulnerable for quite some time. Bonus mechanic, if he deals... Wait a minute. If the Dark Lord hits you, he actually regains health, which may seem annoying at first, but I like it. His healing is there for you to perfect the craft of this fight, and once you understand the rhythm of it, it's not that bad at all. But those are some bosses that break the norms from their own games, and there are plenty of other bosses that do this, but I think you get the idea. The third and final definition for great boss mechanics are mechanics that make you think, wow, that's pretty neat. You know, sometimes it doesn't need an in-depth explanation. 
Translation, I don't feel like justifying why I think these next boss mechanics are cool. They just are, okay? It's my video. I've had moments, though, where a boss does something and I think, Oh, that's pretty neat. I've always loved how Slave Knight Gale's cape extends his attacks. Like, it's just, it's cool, man. He gets extra points for fashion, too. There's also the secret boss from the Cuphead DLC, which I recently finished. They essentially act like boos from the Super Mario series, just in reverse. See, the one you're facing is hostile, while the one behind you is passive, dealing no damage. I love it, it's so engaging in a different way, definitely in my top 5 favorite bosses for Cuphead. However, the last boss in today's video, and the one boss that I completely forgot about until, well, making this video, has one of the most unique mechanics that I've personally experienced. The Nightmare from Remnant from the Ashes. This boss was extremely difficult the first time through. He was so tough, in fact, that they patched him. It was mainly because he had so much health, and if I remember correctly, I think he had four times the amount of health before they patched him. But here's how his mechanic works. You can't damage him normally like you can with the other bosses. So what happens is, he teleports you or any of your friends into a separate dimension where you take constant damage and hordes of enemies spawn. However, the kicker here is the more enemies you kill, the more damage you deal once you return to the boss arena. Meanwhile, the people who are left behind are running around for their lives and trying to clear the area before your arrival. It's one of my favorite boss mechanics that makes me go, wow, that's pretty neat. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the video. Thank you for, uh, for watching. I'm feeling much better, like I said, and I'll be cranking out videos, hopefully, as much as possible. Um, this was a fun one to make. I don't know why. I think the way I wrote my script this time around was a bit more, was a bit more lax, I guess. But I don't know. Like, it was, it was a lot of fun. But guys, let me know your favorite boss mechanics in the comment section down below. I would love to hear about that. And of course, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone, and of course, stay safe.